We're going to be installing the DCX bit pod today. It's a two minor, you know, supposed to be basically plug and play immersion tank out here in the immersion shed. Hey, I'm Bosk. That's Colby. He's the BMA specialist. That's Dennis. Dennis, what do you want your title to be? The BMA executive, the Lord the Commander, owner, Hulk. Owner of BMA. Okay, owner of BMA, also known as Tom Cruise. The wild card. The only the only Tom Cruise we know is Top Gun Tom Cruise. But BMA is out here to help us, uh, you know, crush this install and work on some other things. We have Alexa. She's incredible as well. Uh, out here, we've previously installed the DCX uh, eight minor unit. We've also installed the fog hashing six minor unit and the fog hashing two minor uh, unit. All right, too much talking. We got to get it done. And uh, if you didn't watch our C2 video, grab some Ryobi tools so that all the tools get proper coverage here. We've got you know Milwaukee, Dewalt, Ryobi, and put them all through the paces. It matches the new merch drop of uh, which house do you really fit into? Where shall I put you? Hmm. Once upon a time, well over a year ago, I wired this shed to basically mimic like a shipping container and I was gonna do air cooling. Um, the, and I made a mistake that I didn't make in my first mining shed, which mining shed, which made me feel really stupid is I didn't even bring it up and then the electrician ran the wiring through like the middle here, which is around the area where I'd want to run some intake vents and exhaust fans, you know, side to side. Um, anyway, fast forward, we switched to immersion with this endeavor. And uh, so we had a lot of existing wiring in here. So I'm reusing everything that we possibly can because one, why not? Two, you know, save costs, whatever. Um, and right now, uh, Dennis is moving one of the old outlets but you can see uh, there's three more of them tucked behind that shelf. And we're moving this out a bit closer to where this bit pod is going to be deployed. And this will allow us just to have better cable management. It'll allow us to mount uh, that mining PDU right side up uh, with the orientation and the length. We're going to have to basically mount it upside down. And you may think, oh, like, what do you mean upside down? The gauge on it only has one orientation. so. This is right side up, and if it was the reverse, all the numbers would obviously just simply be upside down. Taking the time to do this right. Colby, what was that quote you had? Oh, there's uh, nothing more permanent than a temporary solution that works. And I've decided that that's the new biography for the Voscoin Mining Farm. <laughs> so. All right, so to accomplish our install today, right with the DCX BitPod, you gotta provide your own power. Um, you can run outlets and run the miners from the outlets. We also have peripherals in the system, like running the pump and the dry cooler that will need to power. So we're gonna use one of these offset mining PDUs. I know I talk about these a lot, but they really are great. Um, with our code, BossCoin, they basically end up like 100 bucks shipped. You could buy something like a trip light, which is gonna be worse, bigger, and significantly more expensive. Um, they get a power gauge readout, and they've got two uh, C20 connections and then four C14 connections. Uh, which will be plenty for what we need to do. And uh, it's an L630 connection here on the end. And if you think I'm speaking gibberish, watch our electric guide. All right, so we just mounted uh, the mining PDU here on the wall. We have finished moving the outlet. And uh, this is gonna be our good enough tidy wire management uh, for now. We kind of skirted around these wires here. Kind of moving on to the next step. You may notice we're plugged in. The line is now hot again, uh, but the actual PDU is off because we have the breaker here, the PDU in the off position. Now we're going to set the dry cooler. So we're going to need to measure uh, from that wall over to you know around here where we want to be between these uh, in these in between these studs here on the shed. 
Uh, we're gonna put the feet on the dry cooler, get that set up, punch some holes through, and, and keep chugging along. Uh, but we're we're making making steady progress, and a lot of these steps we've done so far are you know gonna be maybe unique to our install, but want to share them with you in case you want to you know replicate them or you know inspire something uh, you know DIY that you want to do there as well. So the DCX units, the eight minor unit and the two minor bit pod, uh, both come with feet. They're actually really nice feet. They're kind of like a rubber uh, asphalt type. And we can see this is the two minor dry cooler. What we're gonna have to do is install the feet because right now this is upside down. So we need to install the feet ramps and then you just slide these rubber feet onto them and as you can see on this unit this is basically what it looks like uh, when it's done all they do in this scenario with the smaller unit is just you know basically quite literally shrink it we are going to put the bitpot dry cooler right here in that back area of the shed to make sure that it doesn't blow hot air at our mini split uh, because we don't want to decrease the efficiency and, and also thus the lifespan of that mini split uh, because we had that's our DIY data center the Vosco hard drive mining shed uh, it's a totally clean environment it's air conditioned it doesn't use any sort of alternative cooling uh, like for example we're doing here with the immersion mining or if you look over at the pod over there that uses ambient air cooling uh, the blue is intake vents and then on the back side there's a bunch of exhaust fans that just push you know outside air through it uh, constantly putting the feet on the dry cooler now uh, and again you know they, they send all the associated hardware that you would need so we put the feet adapters already on as you saw and uh, now we take the small washer put it on top take the big washer put it on bottom and then the nut and then it, it just goes through like this and this tension uh, creates the locking mechanism to put the we'll call them the feet into the shoes. There's a smiley face. <laughs> Who made this? So it looks like we got the short end of the stick. Uh, these are two different feet and this one is a little bit too short. Um, and we could try to bring that down a little bit, but that's like exactly right. And that one fits properly. Um, Maybe just like... So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna put it on, I mean, whatever. We've popped the shroud off and we are going to disconnect this power cable and install, in my opinion, what's a proper one. Um, nobody uses this connection here in America. So we're going to input a C14 connection. And what we'll do is we'll feed it right into a PDU. So it'll just go right in like this. Uh, for example, their direct competitor, the fog hashing C2 unit, which is a two minor immersion tank, uh, comes standard uh, with their dry cooler with a uh, C14 connection uh, that connects right into the, uh, you know, your own PDU power distribution unit. And uh, then you have a connection here on the device and you just supply your own C13, C14 or whatever power cable you want to do. Uh, this 
connection on the bit pod comes hardwired uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and cut this off or disconnect it really uh, and then cut the end of one cord and make our own uh, custom power cable otherwise like we have with our dcx uh, eight minor enclosure uh, we would have to use an adapter they also recommend using a transformer and this setup has led to a uh, big efficiency where this whole system is drawing 2,600 watts excluding the miners just to run and operate uh, which has resulted you know over the last several months in an operating cost for me um, up at about $930 it's it's essentially a ninth miner that I have to run power wise in this eighth eight miner uh, system so I'm hoping we can get much better efficiency bypassing a transformer uh, they recommend a transformer due to their pumps uh, in Europe because this is a Polish uh, design device uh, to be rated for 50 hertz. However, right here on the pump specs, it's 50, 60 hertz. So my electricity is 60 hertz, as you can see on my gauge right here. So this should be well within spec and be just fine, and it's going to be a little bit extra work, but it should be worthwhile in the end. If this works out how I hope and expect it to, uh, I'm going to spend the time to make this modification to the 8 minor unit as well. So these are just the AC power connections going into this pump. They're very nice and they just use these like spring-loaded terminals. That's nice. And so all you do is do it. And so it. green, blue, brown, what does that mean to me? Ground. Ground, green and yellow. Live and neutral. Which one's live? Whatever one Whatever you want. <laughs> okay. All right. And I mean, you could reuse this cord grip by just sliding it off. Wow. By just sliding it off. <laughs> yeah, just slide it off. My hands are slippery. Feral crimping tool. Recently Ooh. acquired for a different endeavor we've been on. It's been a bad. Well, wow. it's a cool tool. What Colby's doing right now is he's taking the outer black covering of this power cable after we've removed the end piece that we don't need uh, because we're basically direct wiring it here into the pump. Um, and then he's exposing the copper uh, wire connections, the bare wire, and he's going to use the crimping tool to basically you know, get them a nice, uh, easy finish to um, input here into the pump. Because of the ferrules, it makes inserting these really nice and easy. All done there. I just take this, slide it back in. Slide this cord grip plate down on it. Put the lid back on and we are good to go. Huh. So, much like we did with the cable uh, attached to the pump on the bit pod, you know, margin enclosure. We're going to take another donor cord, and uh, due to the way this cord is manufactured, we actually just popped off uh, what is essentially the cover on it, which leaves these wires exposed. Woo! Cool guy flip. Uh, and so we're going to convert it to a C13 connection. I guess since we're doing it, might as well. Yeah. All right, we're going to punch some holes through. All right, so we're in the process of modifying this cable, but we're just going to punch it through into the shed at this point uh, because it's small. Uh, and that way we can just make a very small hole to get it through. So we're coming off 40 inches, uh, which will give us about where we want with the dry cooler. We'll scoot this over uh, probably a little bit at that point. And we're going to bring the cables through on hole number, on uh, the vinyl siding piece number three uh, and number four. That's what we did on the other side. Uh, so I'm gonna bring this power cable through right here, just towards the top of the second. I don't know. So we have the dry cooler set up over here and again we put the feet on 
uh, we've punched holes into the shed uh, with a you know the one and three quarter inch hole saw. Uh, we used a whatever the biggest bit drill bit I had in that uh, standard drill bit set was to punch uh, the power cable through. Um, then we have we've connected a new power cable on the back side, uh, but that's going to allow us again to accomplish our master plan of using uh, you know one one circuit, one mining pool, um, and just you know a, a clean and effective install there and hopefully proper efficiency by not using a transform or anything like that like they recommend in their official instructions. We've got the bottom connection there Dennis. Where does that go here on the DCX dry cooler? We're going to go ahead and use this one first okay. so that it's the most difficult to find to, to uh, connect to and uh, then we'll, we can choose whichever side we need to put that in when we're inside. Okay we'll work our way out. $14 something hose cutting tool, two inch from uh, Home Depot, Husky brand. We're going to take the bottom connection, which is the furthest back in the dry cooler, and we're going to connect it to the bottom of the enclosure on the bit pod. Uh, this is the same setup that we did on the big boy right here next door, uh, which is the eight minor unit. Uh, that works, so the work here. Oh. The way this tool works is you just click it and it just rats, ratchets down and it'll eventually cut right through. And then you pull it up. Alright, so we've got the hoses through the wall here. I've tightened them down pretty tight on the dry cooler. Um, you know, leaving you know, nearly like two fingers, at least my fingers, of width uh, on the bolt post V V clamp. It's feeling a lot tighter here on the inside. I don't know if these connections are a little bit bigger or something. Uh, DCX also sends uh, these little durable shrouds for the bit pod. Uh, so they have. They have bolt holes, but they also have magnets. So this one, this one has two, two magnets. You know, one, two, three, four, where you see those hole locations, uh, and it fits fine. This one, which says a bit pod, doesn't have anything. So I guess I'm just supposed to take these screws off. But I'll mess with that as like a finished touch. Worked it over the tip there. I'm trying to throw a little bit of water on there is like some uh, lubricant. That was incredibly difficult to get that on. Oh man. But it's on. So now at this point, it's the end of the day. We started in the afternoon on the bit pod install. Uh, we've got the hoses through the wall where we've got them connected. At this point, we need to get coolant into the dual loop system, right? So basically the feed between the dry cooler and also the enclosure heat sink here on the back, basically. Um, and then we will need to, you know, get that system finished. Then we'll put two miners in here, fill it with immersion fluid, um, and that's it so we're really here in the last couple steps uh but trying to have some sort of almost you know semblance of a work-life balance uh you know it's, it's hour 11 of my work day uh right now so <laughs> i'll see you tomorrow all right New day, same shirt. Uh, so we're back here, back out on the farm. Gonna complete this install. We're working through numerous things out here today, uh, but to stay focused, to stay on topic. So uh, the next step that we need to do, because we've gotten all of the hoses attached and clamped down, is we need to pop uh, these covers off. So we've got a flathead to do that. My fourth cover actually was just 
missing the whole time. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna pop these off, and then I've got an Allen key here. So I just popped them off. Uh, now I've got the impact, and I got a five millimeter Allen head on here. <laughs> All righty then. So we got it popped off, and uh, next thing we need to do is we need to fill the system. So when you're pumping this up, per their installation video of the bigger unit, and I was not able to find an installation video or guide on the smaller unit, um, it crank it up to one bar. And in doing that, the system is not holding uh, the pressure here, even though we went ahead and, and tightened it down further. However, you know, we're probably at about half a bar, I guess, on pressure. It seems to be barely leaking, or kind of stopped leaking maybe i mean it's still wet uh, but it's also coolant you know so it's very slow it's a mixture of coolant and water so it's very slow to dry and and uh evaporate so i just have the system running right now i'm observing it and you know we'll, we'll see we'll see where we go from here i have extra immersion space in some other systems uh, so I may just go ahead and I'm just showing you the 8 minor dry cooler here for uh, reference. So I may just go ahead and deploy a couple miners in here and finish the system installation. And worst case scenario, I'll have to you know completely rebuild this pump interface, which would suck. Um, and not something you know a consumer wants to do. Or they may just send me a replacement dry cooler. I went ahead and reached out to uh, DCX support. Uh, they gave me a quick reply and basically said that they're out of their hours right now, um, but they're going to follow up with me tomorrow. And I'm not talking about some automated reply, so a real human replied to me and said that. Uh, so I do appreciate, um, you know, a quick response in that regard. And, uh, you know, I guess, uh, I guess I'll proceed with the install because, I don't know, why not? I'm a I'm a, I'm a I'm a send it kind of guy. All right, I'm going for it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the fans off of these. I'm running Brains on these miners, and so Brains has an immersion mode that basically acts as the fan spoofer here. Uh, so what I need to do is remove the fans, disconnect them, and I've already enabled immersion mode on the Brains firmware side. I'm not gonna cover that today because I've covered that previously. Watch our Brains tutorial to learn more about Brains and using it. Uh, but I'll give you a super quick crash course here you can see on screen, right? You use the Brains toolbox, you install Brains, or you can put the control board in if you're feeling, you know, crazy. The cool thing about the control board now is you pay a 0% developer fee uh, if you're using one of their control boards. And then, you know, once you get it set up, you put in your mining information, obviously, and then you just go down here to the temperature and fan setting and you enable immersion mode, and that's it. Uh, so... It's, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, as far as prepping the miners for immersion, right? We popped the fans off and we had a how to prep your miners for immersion video. I hate to keep, you know, plugging a bunch of other stuff, but I'm also trying to reduce the length on other videos. You know, if, if you're not interested or don't care about that or, or you know, end up redundant, right? Uh, but we pretty much popped the hood off. Hey, pop the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. So we get access to the control board and then we can disconnect it. There's a couple of zip ties we will cut along the way to make the removal possible uh, and quicker. And then we remove the two fans on the front as well as the two fans on the rear. And the most notable thing about the S19K Pros, and so we're dunking two S19K Pros a day in particular, is that these fans use the uh, square fan on the front and use the older rectangular style fan on the rear. And the S21s, for example, the newest generation of Bitmain, Antminer, Bitcoin miners, which my S21s are performing terrible among many other people's as well. 
uh, they use all of these square fans. These square fans are more powerful. Uh, they consume more power and they spin faster and they have higher cooling capabilities because the latest generation is in a way really just an overclocked last generation with their best chips that they kind of put out of the last generation. That's not exactly that, but that's the quick explanation of it. So let's go ahead and uh, get to work. So these are the back plates uh, for your miners inside the DCX bit pod. The function of them is to direct the immersion fluid through the miners, basically so your fluid is you know providing maximum cooling capabilities instead of just flowing around your miners. You need it going through it. And, you know specifically you're targeting the hash board and uh, the power supply some. Dennis, what are your initial thoughts on the DCX bit pod? nice cute little two minor immersion tank it'll be interesting to see how well it operates once we put the miners in and get them started all right so Dennis is just knocking the uh, little attachment pieces out with a flathead oh <laughs> <laughs> Little customization, you know. So what what Dennis actually installed right here is called a an air bubble pocket, and uh, what it does is it increases the flow. Um, it's kind of like baffling in an exhaust system, you know. So to do this, we've got to remove some of the screws. It reuses the screws that are on uh, the actual miner. It's a great opportunity to use power tools. You're probably not strong enough and you could take it as a challenge to put two of these in here at the same time and if you get them in there and you don't ruin them and damage them and break them uh you will not get them out and it's also razor sharp yeah it's a matter it's the conversation you need to have with yourself is this worth it you want to do the honors colby yeah sure. all right that's with your back Lift with your legs. Wait a second. What happened to the math we did? She don't fit. But we just... We estimated. And we've determined that we are all three of us not capable of solving this puzzle. Or, uh... Colby, what do you think is, uh... What's wrong with it? This side that has the two holes on it? that are at an angle to each other are supposed to be on this side of this stamped piece. But you're saying that it's? Incorrect. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Maybe. Or we can't figure it out. But we need a GSD. Get stuff done. VMA have and have worked with the DCX 8 minor generation 1 tubs. Uh, I have a generation 2 tub where miners go in easy enough. But in the generation 1, you had to basically slam them in. It's a little bit too tight. And that's like the official DCX installation team slammed them in. Yeah. There it goes. You know what I like to call this? Good enough, and also there's a bug. Hello, bug. Oh. There's a bug in there. Uh -huh. All yeah. right, so this is uh, DCX's branded Thermosafe R fluid. Uh, this is a partially open tub. This is five liters, I believe, right? 22 liters. <laughs> the American in me 
getting out of this good old 22 liter. I think it's roughly five gallons. Right. All right, so we just filled the uh, system with fluid. We want to make sure we don't overfill. We put about, you know, two and two thirds maybe of uh, these DCX uh, immersion fluid containers into the system. Remember, it's a dual loop, so the immersion fluid is just here in the enclosure, right? Because we have the coolant and water mis mixture in the piping going in and out to the dry cooler. And then the cooling function is basically performed here on the back uh, with that attached heat sink. So, our whole system's already hot. The dry cooler's running outside. Circuit's live. Colby, do the honors. So, I thought these gloves would be good enough. But this fluid level is very high. The level that this fluid sits at, and like, I'm not quick to say this, something like this, is like, it's like anxiety inducing. Also, forget any dreams you may have of moving this at all once you put fluid in it, disregarding the weight. Look how close the immersion fluid has to be to the absolute top of this, right? To go over the spill line. It's, I mean, it's very high. And adjusting the pump speed, which isn't something you commonly do, is difficult. I have to push the actual enclosure uh, back with my finger. And so like, you know, this is going down to pump speed one. And that's two, which is just the middle setting. And then that's three. All right, so that was a three foot cable, I believe. And now, this is a six foot cable, which should definitely get us where we want to go. I mean, it's a good thing to think about though and talk about all the random stuff you need when you install, um, you know, certain immersion systems. Because like, if you don't have this, I mean, I mean, you can try to do something weird, like, you know, be inside a trash bag or something, but you don't want to, Put your hand in here. I mean, this this is a straight carcinogen. I mean, it's, it's oil based, petroleum based. It's uh, it's not good. It's not what you want. You know. So we have installed the power cables, we've got the six foot cable, we've got the three foot cable to the PDU that we mounted on the wall. We have ethernet cables, I think these are 15 feet long, uh, just temporarily ran uh, to the switch we have on the wall over here. Um, going to measure it out, make sure I've got the right lengths, and then run it along the wall and staple it or something so it's nice and neat and tidy. And I'm also going to, unrelated to this, I'm going to get these other meeting, uh, mining PDUs up here on the wall uh, sooner or later. And thanks to BMA for helping me, we just finally tidied it up in here from the install, I think back in September. Uh, you can tell the wire management has been a priority, right, Dennis? Absolutely. Yep, Colby? It's better. Hey, uh, super good enough. Yep. So um, right now the, the system's operational we have not dealt with the leak outside so i don't believe that we are uh to pressure where we are supposed to be uh, per the install manual let's go and check it out i haven't looked at it recently uh but the system i mean it, it is cooling it, it's it's running a it's running very cool uh so 
coming out here and looking at it, it, it doesn't seem particularly wet. Uh, so, you know, this is this is about the leak point, and you'll see that it, yeah, it's it's wet there, but it's not. I believe that's just residual. I don't think it's actively leaking. I was hoping and thinking that this is not going to be a that this is not going to be such a big leak that it's going to make the system unusable, and it doesn't leak instantly. Only you know when I get towards like you know 0.8 bars of pressure. So my thought process is it'll basically leak until it can handle whatever pressure, and if that pressure is good enough. Uh, then so be it. My only concern is when this can get super hot in the summer. But again, I'm hoping and thinking maybe that it'll just kind of self-solve and you know kind of leak itself out until it's it's fine again. Uh, it's going to be in that category of hopefully and probably good enough. Uh, it's not exactly what I wanted to see, but you know that's the way it went. So I've got the two S S19Ks in there mining Bitcoin. Uh, uh, so they're already, they're already running, hashed in, running away. Uh, so I'm going to let the system do its thing. I'm going to log in the miner, check the temps. Uh, I'm just going to keep watching it from here and see where it goes and see if we're good to go. But we're not dealing with any leaks other than that one um, on that one connection. And remember, that's a connection we never touched until we saw it was leaking and we tried to tighten it. Uh, that is a factory-made connection uh, on the DCX system. So, you know, not ideal, but it's working, working so far. As you can see here, I've got three S19K Pros. Uh, the one that says RV, and then the one that says 115 is deployed. Back online, operational, hashing away right now in the DCX BitPod. One of the most impressive things about the BitPod though that I didn't initially realize, it, because I've been so fixated on dunking these amp miners, is that you could actually deploy four watts miners in the BitPod, which is doubling the capacity. And given the fact that the DCX BitPod dry cooler is just simply quite literally half of their eight miner dry cooler, I do believe that it would have the cooling capacity to run four miners because when you basically double the system, it can sufficiently run eight miners. That makes the BitPod have a unique value proposition, really positioning itself as like a small to even medium sized immersion mining container, but only if you're using the right equipment. There's no way, obviously, that you'll be fitting four amp miners in here. Two ant miners are taking up the majority of this footprint. Uh, so if you're a micro BT what's miner guy, this may be the most interesting immersion kit for you, depending on what you want to do and how many miners you have, namely four. As you can see, I've only put two ant miners inside of here. I have not test fit for what's miners and I won't be test fitting for what's miners. Have you personally done this? I'd love to hear from you. Share some pictures or videos on our Bosscoin Talk forum or in our Bosscoin Discord server. I'll link them out down below. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's up, it's operational. The fluid level is so high, it's gonna give you anxiety. Several days later. All right, so just walked into the shed. Immersion fluid pooling up over here. Something in this equation is leaking. Remember, this is dual loop, so it's not, these hose connection is not coming out of these hoses. Like, that is a bunch of immersion fluid on the floor. All right, skirt, pump the brakes. F***ed up. So, I, I mean, I guess it's my fault, but it just, it wasn't clear. Uh, I wish this would come with, you know, simple directions printed off, because, I mean, this is something like a quick note would have made it obvious. But the black piece can be cracked in half, basically. Uh, so I did that and then I needed to remove a couple gallons. Thankfully, uh, when I got my fog hashing C2 kit, it came with a little aquarium type pump. Um, and it's really easy to deploy because it's got a C13 connection or on the back of that power brick. Uh, so I just plugged it right into this uh, PDU, pumped out a couple gallons, cracked it in half, redid the bolts. You know, I guess, I mean, I, I take ownership for this mistake. Uh, I wish it was a little more clear. 
I mean, this I, I've, I've done a lot of systems at this point, and it's frustrating making a, a rookie style mistake like that. Uh, maybe I'm in the overconfidence period, right? Uh, but you know, to round it out, you know, I installed the DCX eight minor, installed the fall caching B6D. We've got uh, both the six and two to three cell miners from Bixbit deployed. Uh, we also deployed the fall caching C2. And then the last one that we have deployed is the DCX two minor bit pod. And you know, it's just, dude, go, to go through all this and not really stain the shed that much and then just have freaking splash down here at the end. Uh, so, you know, whatever. It is what it is, don't make the mistake yourself. And that's why I try to document everything. And yeah, I think it's embarrassing. Uh, and oh, you know, Vosk is supposed to know everything. He's mining guru. I don't know everything. Uh, and uh, I make mistakes sometimes, whatever. And above all, I'm gonna show you, uh, because I, I am human, I make plenty of mistakes all the time. And uh, more importantly, I hope that you don't make this mistake if you grab one of these systems. So, hey, we live, we learn, and we just keep, just keep chugging along. All right, so you may notice, <laughs> what is that? The PDU is multiplied. This was just too much to try to run on one circuit. Uh, once the weather kicked up and it was about 70 degrees uh, outside, and then I still have no airflow in the shed, so everything's working a little bit harder than it should be. Uh, the electric draw was just too high. Uh, to my surprise, it did not trip here on the PDU. It tripped at the panel. Uh, so the panel breaker uh, tripped prior to the PDU. And you may, if you, you know, focus in here, you'll see, well, of course it did. You have 16 amps on the bottom and 22 on the top. That is because I'm pulling from this circuit now because it was right here and available. Uh, so the bottom PDU is running all of the uh, DCX in infrastructure, right? So it's running the pump in the bit pod as well as the dry cooler and the pump in the DCX 8 minor unit as well as the dry cooler. Uh, so yeah, any way you slice it, uh, you're just going to need two circuits with uh, the bit pod. Two miners are going to absolutely take up an entire circuit. Uh, if you even want to do some overclocking or something like that, uh, then, then you would be better off actually running three circuits, right? So you've got one for each miner uh, and then one to run the you know, uh, DCX bit pod uh, infrastructure, the immersion mining infrastructure. Uh, so. You know, two circuits will be plenty fine for me. Uh, now I'm kind of running the numbers and trying to balance the panels everywhere. Because uh, right now my I have, I have two 200 amp panels here for the immersion mining shed, and panel B is overloaded, uh, and there's really not too much going on on panel A at the moment uh, as we work through uh, the systems on that a little bit further. Uh, so, but the point is that I, I need to move things around, get them balanced. This has been a rapidly developing project for me so anyway that that's the note i just want to make sure you guys are aware uh my what i thought was genius was just not all that genius plan uh to kind of cram it all onto one circuit even with efficient settings uh just wasn't you know quite a, a realizable dream especially because these miners aren't like my s19j pro 104s that are only consuming you know 2200 300 watts uh these are the s19ks uh so they are consuming about you know 2800 watts uh and you know, it's just it's just not possible uh, I like the front base plate uh, what's interesting is you really only get room to run cables out of the back of it uh, we actually kind of this worked out in our favor because we had just happened to basically run them this way to match the lower hoses uh, but with the way they cut this ideally they would cut out a notch on the top so you could run cables out of the top or bottom the way it's set up is you pretty much have to run them out of the bottom for it to be clean and we do not have enough cable slack in order to achieve that. Uh, so, uh, when, whenever I find a spare day sometime far away in my very far away future in the distant galaxy, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a, a notch uh, and make that a nice clean finished install. But that's uh, that, that ain't gonna be today uh, for your boy. So, you know, really it was a good experience. It was an easy install. Did run into an issue with the leaking. Uh oh, <laughs> moon time boys. Oh, <laughs> send it. Oh man, I'm ready. I'm ready. This is the bear mark. It was long, dark, and full of terror. Uh, so, again, you know, good, good system, effective, initial impressions. It's all, you know, good, making sense, happy with it. 
it's a mini version of the big one, so it's not all unfamiliar or intimidating, especially to me. You know, you look at this size, right, and look at the, the bigger one over there. You look at the back, you look at, you know, what, what is essentially the radiator sizing here. And, you know, it's, it's half. I mean, you, it's blowing a ton of air. It's very cold. It's probably 40 degrees out here right now. So, you know, yeah, it's cool on easy mode. Uh, but the basic math here simply lines up that the two minor system will be essentially overcooled because this uh, dry cooler for the DCX eight minor unit is sufficient for eight miners. Right, so we got half the cooling capabilities for 25% of the minor, uh, you know, capacity there. Uh, so you know, really everything was you know good, easy enough. Uh, you'll need two people uh, for some of these things, like setting the dry cooler and having a second hand is, is a game changer. So you know, try to get you know your spouse, your kid, your buddy involved, have make it a good time. I mean, it's definitely an experience. Uh, you know, this is definitely plug and play. It's definitely DIYable. Um, and uh, you know, my, my my initial impressions are it's good. It's what I expected in a good way. I'm happy with it, and uh, it's very quiet, especially you know here on the inside, right? Uh, this unit is even quieter with the design uh, than the DCX um, eight minor enclosure because of the way it kind of like whirlpools and, and, and the pumps moving pretty fast, uh, circulating the immersion fluid. It makes a little fluid sound. It's almost like a little ticking sound in a way, but not, not a mechanical tick. That, uh, I mean, here, listen, listen, listen. Only thing I don't think I've covered is going to be the cost, right? I mean, what, what does this cost? Generally speaking, right, when you ballpark immersing miners, when you're looking at the eight minor units by DCX and the six minor units by fog hashing and other companies as well, you're essentially going to spend, you know, to deploy six to eight miners around a thousand bucks per mining rig. It is more expensive to deploy a two minor system, but what does it cost, right? What really goes into it? And I want to remind you that they sent us this to review, you know, really thankful for the opportunity and they want to sell units. So, if you check out their site, you want a better deal, or you thinking about this, that, whatever, right? Drop in their uh, email down below, shoot them an email, and be like, hey, what's the best deal you can do? Or I want the Boss Coin subscriber discount. All right, there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Another day in the life out here building a mining farm. Um, you know, as a reminder, this was single phase electricity, uh, but the way this thing, the system works, right? You could pretty easily deploy this on three phase. Uh, or you know break a phase off especially because you know the main thing you're running here your miners and they're running on an external circuit nothing to do with the actual system uh, but obviously if you're gonna be looking at three phase you'd probably be looking at minimum right of looking at eight mine or six minor units and so forth as opposed to some of these smaller two minor kits uh, but it's a great way to check it out try it out get started uh, maybe you have a couple miners I really am so impressed with immersion mining on the fact that it can really help kind of decentralize mining and bring mining back to small homes and, and neighborhoods, even with HOAs and stuff. Because I mean, this thing just just put you know an AC unit brand on it like freaking train and uh, T R A N E or whoever, right? And uh, be like, yeah, it's my AC unit, dude. We 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 look at it because uh, you know you don't have that wah fan sound you, you just have what you know sounds like a loud ac unit and then internally you know essentially nothing this is easily something you could slap in the garage punch it through your wall which by code probably doesn't even have insulation i insulated my garage because it makes a big difference and you know set it right there be done so that's all i got you're on the boss one youtube channel my name is boss and uh, we're going to close it out with 10 seconds of tails because we were 10 seconds of tails on every video because she kickstarted this mining journey. And I need to hurry up and wrap this up because it's getting dark outside. I need to go see that pup. I miss her. All right. See you later.